Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. We are the Joyful Noise Band. And we're going to wait for our words on the slides. And then we're going to sing. And we invite you to sing with us. great time up here and we hope that you will as well. Open! 
welcome. We are getting excited up here. We're going to bring in our worship team, and we invite you all to stand and join us in singing. The words are all up here as we welcome you to church. out from the children of freedom, every race and every nation. Sing it out, sing a new hallelujah, yeah! Yeah! Let us sing love to the nations, bringing hope of the praise that us freedom, make him know Hello, 
My name is Beverly Smurha, and I'm a member of and, and I'm a member of the Board of Trustees. We are glad you are with us this morning at First Unitarian of Oakland. We are working on becoming an intentional, multi-generational, multi-racial, multicultural, inclusive, and anti-oppressive religious community. You are welcome here. There will be a 10-minute orientation for newcomers at the end of today's service. Look for Emily Stoper in front of the pulpit to ask, answer your questions. We also invite newcomers to fill out our online guest connection card. If you're with us today on Zoom, the link is provided in the chat. If you're here in person, the link and, and code is on gray cards, hopefully on a seat back behind you, near you, filling out the online guest connection card enables us to help you explore what our community offers and to find ways to participate. We want to ensure that all cultures, all skin colors, all ethnicities feel respected and welcome in this beloved community. Hello. Welcome to church. My name is Piper Roanoke Swim. I am a friend of this congregation, and I am delighted to be able to open the church year here with you today. In one of my traditions, reclaiming witchcraft, as well as at the First Unitarian Church of Oakland, we do not begin our gathering without first acknowledging that we are on stolen land. If it is comfortable in your body, will not cause you pain, I invite you to put a hand in contact with this land that is not ours. This is the land of the Huchin Ohlone Chosheno speaking Ohlone people. They are here today. They are fighting for their rights to sovereignty and to exist. And we, the beneficiaries of theft, Remember, as we begin our work, that we hope will heal so many wounds in this world, that this land is theirs, and that it is right and proper before we begin any work here to remember these true things. If you wish to be of direct benefit to the rightful people of this place, we'll see a link to the work of the Sogoreate Land Trust. They are waiting for us to participate in their struggle for sovereignty. Thank you. a series of candles. Our first is the peace candle. 
with these words from uh, the Dalai Lama? Would we read them together? World peace must happen. East. Peace is the vision of human compassion. We light this candle, remember that harm done to one is harm done to all. And in one voice we say, Black Lives Matter. Let's do it again. Black Lives Matter. Today, we begin with a ritual, a recognition of one of the key elements that creates life. And so I call to the waters. Water is the first teacher. Water is our home. We are among the minority of animals that have ever tried this experiment of living on the 5% of the earth by volume capable of supporting life that is dry. And we take water with us wherever we go. Without water, life as we know it on earth is impossible. We know that water is absolutely vital. And we forget. Spirit of water, remind us. You who flow between and within us all, make us remember that we are intimately connected with one another. Whatever affects one of us for good or ill affects us all, whether we know it or not. Help us to hear one another today. Help us to fight to keep you clean, though we sacrifice comfort and greed that are more familiar. Be with those who are filled with tears today. Remind us that burden shared in community is how we come back into connection that allows us to do the work. Today we light our chalice in honor of you. Be with us today, water. We light this chalice, symbol of Unitarian Universalism. May it remind us of the divine spark in all of creation, the power of love to heal what is broken, and to be grateful for life's blessings each day. We begin our year. Many of us never left for the summer and have been working really, really hard for the past three, six, nine, twelve years to sustain this community. Thank you. Thank you to those who came to the rehearsal for choirs this week so that we have abundant and joyous music to begin our celebrations. Thank you to those who came in body or in spirit in this hall and on Zoom. Happy 
and in one voice, let the people say, Come, let us worship together. I just realized there are gestures for this. At a pagan ritual, the words are not on the screen. So as I introduce this chant to you, I invite you to struggle with learning it orally. So there are gestures. The words are born of water, born of water. Sorry, that was the gesture of me passing to you. (laughs) Born of water, cleansing, powerful. Healing, changing. We are. And the music is born of water, cleansing, powerful. So, born of water, cleansing, powerful. Healing, changing, we are. Healing, changing, we are. Oh, you got it the first try. Look at you. We're going to do it three times or so because thrice makes a spell. Born of water, cleansing, powerful, healing, changing, we are. Born of water, cleansing, powerful, healing, changing, we are. Born of water, cleansing, powerful, Healing, changing, we are. Thank you. This is a time in the service that we mostly enjoy a lot. (laughs) Where... (laughs) where we greet each other. It's always nice to greet someone who you haven't seen before. And um, you can um, see if people want to bump elbows or um, fist bump or anything that doesn't involve um, French kissing would be fine. (laughs) (laughs) Greet, greet, greet.
come, my loves. It is time. All right. You are all so happy to see each other, and that is a good thing. Now let us be blessed with singing. From one of Alan's favorite books, We Are Water Protectors, by Carol Lindstrom, an indigenous female author. Water is the first medicine, Nokomis told me. We come from water. It nourished us inside the womb as it nourishes us here on Mother Earth. Water is sacred, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. We fight for those who cannot fight for themselves, the winged ones, the crawling ones, the four-legged, the two-legged, the plants, trees, rivers, lakes, the earth. We are all related. Now is the time in our service when we bring forward to the attention of our congregation the names of those we wish to honor, to comfort, and to commemorate. When the bell sounds, please speak these names aloud. Thank you. 
For the names that have been spoken and for those that remain in the silent sanctuaries of our hearts, we say, we hold them in our care. What affects one of us for good or ill affects us all, whether we know it or not. Water, be with those who are filled with tears today and remind them that burdens shared in community are eased. Be with those who are filled with joy today. Help their inspiration flow to those parched with despair. Help our community to be alive again together as we renew our work with this water ritual. You are sacred. We are sacred. We honor you and one another. Thank you. In the water, 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 in the water.
As I see our slide went awry, that was an arrangement of Wade in the Water by T. Morant. So in a few minutes, we're going to begin this water communion thing. And there's a reason why we and Unitarian Universalist congregations across the world begin our church here with this ritual of connection. There are many reasons. I have a favorite one, though. If you'll permit me, I'd like to take you on a brief journey to explain it. May I? Thanks. There is a crisis in our oceans. 90% of global warming heat across the last two centuries has been absorbed by the oceans and they can't keep going. Ocean acidification is in crisis, melting ice caps, marine dead zones. If we don't change something right now, the waters of our world will never be the same and then we will all die. But it's okay because there's still time to act. How do you feel? Yeah, not too good, right? We're supposed to feel energized and ready to make a change, right? Growing up in the 90s, that's what I learned, that I was supposed to take in all of this information, all of this terrifying news, and that that was going to propel me forward to make the changes that needed to happen so my great-grandchildren can breathe. And I didn't feel that way. And we don't feel that way across the last 30 years as a species, we've failed to make the systemic changes we need to ensure a viable future. So why? There are some people who do believe that there is nothing wrong, but most of us aren't in that group. The reason for a lot of us, has to do with a place right around here. Very, very ancient part of our brains that holds the sympathetic nervous system responses of fight, flight, and freeze. In fight, of course, we try to destroy the threat. Flight, we run away from the threat. But when we think we can't defeat the threat and that we can't run fast enough to get away from it, there's a third response that kicks in, and that's the freeze response. And this is what happens all the time. Especially with this huge existential threat of climate change. So I took this question to seminary with me. I wasn't trying to find an answer to why I wasn't taking more action to help our world survive because that question lived in that shame-filled part of my brain. And I was not paying attention to it really loudly. But an answer found me. How can we get past that freeze response? Connection and ritual have been part of human societies as long as we have been humans and probably longer, and there's a reason. The first place I found this connection between our inaction on a global scale and the ritual that helped me to feel alive and able to move was in Sarah Darwin and Stephen Cave's article called Rituals and Guilt. They explain that rituals have always been part of human society everywhere through all documented history and relate it to a 2009 report from the American Psychological Association 
but this limited, on this limited human response to climate change that explains that the successful strategies must reach out not only to our rational selves absorbing statistics, but also to our emotional and social selves, and that this is exactly what rituals are good for. Sometimes individual ritual can get us through the freeze response and able to once again see that we can affect huge problems. But we are at our core social animals. So community rituals can do a lot more to get us through. Often we connect in some way to the more than human world. It may be with habitual rituals like hikes, sketching natural objects, meditation or breathing work. In fact, that same APA report suggests that our disconnection from the more than human world is one of the roots of the climate change crisis. And so when we reconnect through ritual, we move beyond the freeze response and again choose to make transformative, wise changes. So let's try again. Letting go of all of those terrifying numbers and facts and settling into your roots, I invite you to let out a breath. Because every time you let out a breath, you are giving the trees around you the air that they breathe. And I invite you to take a breath. And know that that breath is given to you by the trees. Feel the interconnection. Letting go of a breath and bringing one in. Do you feel any different? How about a moment ago when you were listening to Wade in the Water? How about when you were greeting one another? This place is full of rituals, and that's part of why we come back. The book I read from earlier, We Are Water Protectors, tells the story of the Black Snake, a Lakota name for the Keystone XL pipeline that was based on their ancestors' prophecies handed down across centuries. And it tells the story of their struggle to stop the, pop line, the pipeline from poisoning their waters. But the story doesn't begin by describing the facts and figures of the situation. It begins with water. Water is the first teacher, Nokomis told me. The protagonist child's deep connection with water is her source of immense strength to fight against forces that are so much larger than her entire community. Her connection with that community and with her ancestors strengthened her too. The last line of the book is, the black snake is in for the fight of its life. Because when the book was published, no one knew if the Standing Rock protest would be successful, and it didn't matter. It didn't daunt them. They were so deeply connected to their water, to their community, to the animals and plants that relied on them, to the seventh generation who will need clean water. And the protest itself was filled with ritual. They created and recreated a community strong enough to hold the terrors of violence and death and failure that could lead them into a freeze response that would prevent them from stopping anything. Sometimes it was rituals as simple as breathing together or singing. 
And then another extraordinary thing happened. They won. What we can do in community. Now, the First Unitarian Church of Oakland is not the Lakota. Right now, as we begin our church year together, not everyone sitting here in person and in Zoom feels equally welcome. We have a lot of healing to do. A lot of us don't have the depth of ritual tools and cultural memory that the Lakota have to call on to do that healing work. And we know some things are true of all of our ancestors. Water was sacred to them. Community was sacred. Our interdependence and responsibility to our descendants were understood. Go back far enough. And it is true of us all. Like many in this room, I have lost most of my ancient indigenous ancestors' wisdom to colonialism and empire. And I carry the knowledge that their descendants perpetrated the same harm on other peoples. And I know that their wisdom came from listening to nature and to one another. And so I know we can reclaim it when we gather in community and listen to one another deeply. So we come to church. The same day of the week, at the same time, we sing together, we greet one another, we ask about each other's days. We give of our wealth of money and time. And today, we will reconnect with each other and with water a more than human sacred source of life. We do these things that they may help to hold us through panic and freeze to the other side, and then we do the work. So are you feeling ready to begin? Those of you on Zoom, I invite you to add your reflections from the summer into the chat. Short or long, pithy or rambling, we want to hear. You will nourish our community with your experiences. Before you do, please take a moment to thank the ones you learned from this summer, be they human or more than human. Those of you here in body, I invite you to bring physical water from home or here and add it to our well, nourishing us with your embodied ritual action. And before you do, please take a moment to thank the water you hold for giving you life. Meanwhile, both parts of our community can read together words of reflection sent to me by congregants earlier this week on the slides. These actions together, knowing that they are for a larger purpose, bring our community back to center, ready to begin the work of this church year. Let us begin. Will you please um, come down the side aisles with your water? And if you'd like to, you can use that microphone to say where your water is from, and then go back, process back up the middle aisle. If you didn't bring water, there is water here for you. Please come. Creek in uh, the coastal range. Water from the Redwood Regional Park Fountain. Up, uh, by the parking lot. 
Water from Charlottesville, Virginia. Water from my kitchen tap. Water from my kitchen filter, so grateful for clean water to drink. Water from my kitchen in Oakland, where I spent most of the summer, finally. Loch Ness, Scotland. Water from home, I'm very grateful to be housed. From my kitchen sink. Water from a hike in Yosemite. Water from the pool at the women's retreat. Water from last winter's abundant rain. We have reclamation tanks that hold the water from the winter. Water from Ohlone Dog Park. Water from the Unitarian Church. Water from Berkeley, California, to which I have just moved from Kansas. Water from this great church. Water from our back patio where we played with our three-year-old neighbor who's half Navajo. From the sink in our backyard at Woolsey where we celebrate 30 years of living there. Wonderful tap water from Oakland. Symbolic water from the pool at the women's retreat. Some good Rocky Mountain water from a stream. Water filtered in Oakland and spent time in the woods of Leona Canyon. Water from the Unitarian Church, which has been so welcoming. Water possibly from the Mojave Desert. Water provided from this church. Thank you all for thinking of me. Water from my home in Richmond, California. Water from this great welcoming church. Remembering water from the North Atlantic uh, near the country of Iceland where I went swimming this summer. Water from this church, thank you. Water from my tap, but symbolizing Rainbow Falls near Devil's Post Pile in the Sierra Nevada mountains, abundant and clear and clean and beautiful. Water from this lovely church that I'm visiting for the first time, thank you. Water from this great church. Water from my backyard where I garden every day and grow lots of beautiful organic vegetables. Water from Middle Harbor Park. Water from Sarah's backyard. Water poured into the dry creek behind the DMV on Claremont Avenue in Oakland. Water from this church, from Oakland, which is my home. Water from Sufi Dance Camp at Camp Herms in El Cerrito. Water from my mom's apartment at Piedmont Gardens. Water from this church, thank you very much. Words were up on the screen, but this is the first time in many, many years that we've traveled over the summer. Water from this community that has sustained me through thick and thin. Water from Strawberry Creek in Berkeley, beautifully running again this year. 
Water from the Atlantic Ocean in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Water from this lovely church, thank you. Water from a wedding in Scotland, an engagement in London, and visiting family in Somerset, New Jersey. Water from my apartment one block over, that has been my home for five months now. Water from home. Water from our house down by the lake in Oakland. We'll take this water outside to water the plants that are so lovingly cared for by Jane Vicente so often. for some announcements. Restorative, uh, restorative approaches to congregational conflict with hope for us in person. Thank you. Uh, on Saturday, September 16th, from 10... RSVP before Friday, September 15th. Come with a bag lunch. We are inviting everyone to bring their own lunch. We, the church, will provide the snacks and coffee. Come with an item for our shared centerpiece. We are moving, we are inviting everyone to bring something for the center of our space that represents an ancestor or who helps you stay present and engaged when it's an interest in doing so. Are you interested in membership at the First Unitarian Church of Oakland? The community connection teams invite you to exploring membership next Sunday, September 17th, after the church service in the Star King Room. It is a chance to get to know each other better learn a bit about our church and congregation and discuss what it means to be a member. If you have already been participating and feel ready to join, we will have a membership book available for you to sign. For more information, stop by the welcome table in Lenty Hall coffee hour. Thank you. Today we're celebrating water, acknowledging its power. Part of the basic dynamic nature of water is flow. Flow is a basic property of life. It's certainly a property of our church which depends on the flow of concern and affection amongst us for its survival, and on the continuous flow of some of our individual resources, money, 
into the joint project of the church. So when the baskets come to you, please give as generously as you can to maintain our flow. If the ushers would come forward.
letting go of a breath. And breathing in. May you be filled up like the empty vessel now full of the waters and the wisdom of all of our journeys apart. May you be ready for the work ahead. May you step aside from shame and guilt when you freeze in the face of insurmountable odds and return to the communities that help you to feel whole. And then, may we act. Thank you, water. Thank you, community. Thank you, church. Thank you. Dedicate this song to little Junior Park. A cousin of mine is going on, but we'd like to kind of carry on in his name. I sing.